One of the most frequently asked questions that I am asked all the time across my social media platforms, across my YouTube, across my comments, is about the research process. So how do you start? Where do you even begin? You need to submit a dissertation, you need to submit a research proposal, you need to think of a hypothesis, you need to think of a problem statement, you need to find a gap in literature. Where do you even begin with the whole research process? Now, it isn't as hard as it seems. It's just one of those things that you're never told or you're never taught how to do it's one of those things that you just kind of figure out and so hopefully in today's video I will be talking to you about the overview and kind of a quick beginner's guide to the research process giving you the steps of how you get from zero to having something, having a question, having a hypothesis, having somewhere to start. I'm going to be making this into a bit of a series. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you an overview as to the different chapters, the different sections of the process, how you get from nothing to something. And then in the following videos, I will be going through each of those sections in a bit more detail. And hopefully if you are someone who is within one of those Kind of parts you can just jump to that video and have a have a quick uh, quick watch if you are someone who is just starting off then this is the best place for you to begin have a little think about how you're going to navigate your research process and how you're going to get from the start to the end it is not difficult but it does require a few steps a few technicalities um, which i'll talk you through today i'll leave the timestamps down below so you feel free to go and jump to the different sections that you are interested in watching and if you do enjoy this kind of video and you want to see the rest of the videos from me then don't forget to subscribe to see more on my channel so step number one is to choose a topic now this is the beginning of something beautiful. This is where you choose what you're actually going to be studying and when you're actually going to be reading about. Now it's really important that you have chosen a topic that you are interested in, that there is an interest in within the research space that has something missing. So you don't want to choose a topic that we know everything about. You want to choose a topic that we don't know everything about and there are things that we want to try to find more about. You want to choose a topic that is within your university guidelines so as much as i would love to do a research on the solar system about space well if my course is to do with cell biology well then i can't so you have to think about your limits think about what you are allowed to do within your university guidelines as well but you do need to think about taking that broad topic and making it into something a bit more narrow so it's not good enough to just say i want to do uh, research on alzheimer's okay alzheimer's fine you've got a topic but you now need to narrow it down. So what about it are you looking at? Are you looking at the risk factors? Are you looking at what happens once you have Alzheimer's? Are you looking at a specific group of people? Are you looking at a specific cell type in animal? Like what is it that you are looking at? You need to narrow that down. In order to narrow it down, you need to do a bit of a literature search. So whilst choosing a topic, whilst you know, in this first stage, you need to look at literature. So to find literature, you want to go to different websites where you have literature. And this could be, for example, Google Scholar is a good place to start. PubMed is a good place to start. These are places where you can find literature about that topic and kind of read around the subject and identify whether, firstly, is it something that you are actually interested in? And secondly, is there enough information for you to gather to be able to write your literature review in the future. So that first step, your first step of your research process is thinking about the topic. Because without a topic, you, there's nothing, you can't do anything else. So the first step has to always be to find a topic and think about it. Now, once you've thought about a topic and you've narrowed it down to the thing that you're interested in, at this stage, you will then go to your supervisor, to your lecturer, to your professor, to your mentor, to your tutor, and you will ask them, do you think this is a good topic? And that is where you will get some feedback and most likely you'd have to go back, have another think or try to refine it a bit more or try to think about it in a different way. But that is always the first step. In the video that I make about finding a good topic, we'll talk about it in a lot more depth. But to start off with, to introduce, this is always the first step. 
So the second step is to identify a problem. And this is what we like to call in, as, you know, in, in research, the gap in literature. So a problem slash gap in literature is the part of research that we, that is missing. So when you do research, in fact, in order to graduate from a PhD, you have to, and this is one of the criteria, you have to produce research. It has to be in a thesis or in a, in a published paper. It has to be research, it has to be a finding that is new, something that we do not know before. We did not know before your research, right? And that is the number one criteria for, for actually getting a PhD. It is the fact that it has to be something new, it has to be something novel that you have discovered, okay? So you need to think about the gap in literature. Where is there a missing piece? I understand this, I understand that, we know this, we know that, but what is there that we don't quite know? And that is the bit that you are then going to try to identify during your research process, right? Chosen a topic, now we need to find the problem. Where is the missing information? Now, in order to do this, you need to have read a lot of papers around your topic. Um, so that's why I said initially, you need to have had approval from your committee, from your tutor, your supervisor to say, right, that's okay, it's good for me to go there. Now you're, you've got that topic that you're looking at, you then want to try to find the gap. Where are you going to slot in? What is it that you are going to provide in terms of knowledge? Now, the identifying a problem is actually quite an important and quite a critical part of the research process. It's almost impossible you to continue on with your research without having identified the problem because if you don't have a problem, you don't know what it is you're looking at, you don't know what methods you're using, you don't know what your research question is going to be or your hypothesis. So at this stage, you have to have a very well-defined research problem and your question in order to continue on to the next steps. So when I say research problem, and, and we'll talk about this more in, in the following video that I'm going to produce about it, but when I talk about research problem, it could be a number of different things. So it could be that we understand or we have the knowledge of a certain situation, but now you're comparing it to a different situation. So it could be more theoretical, where you're comparing two things to each other that haven't been compared before. So that would be fine as long as what you have is something original or you may be trying to explore a specific relationship. Let's say, for example, in my case with my PhD, I was looking at two different proteins and the relationship between them. So that is one type of research that you can do as well. Um, so just think about your topic and think about where the gap is in the literature. You have to read a lot to be able to find this. And a question that I get a lot emailed to me and directed to me is about this problem so how do i find a problem like how do i find a gap in literature and it's almost impossible for me to to give you any answers because i have to have read all the papers within your topic in order to answer that question <laughs> which is almost impossible so it's something that you have to do independently and you can always discuss with me you can discuss kind of trying to refine that question but for the most part you need to read around your subject yourself to get that question then step number three is to actually write down your research question. Now, this is usually in the form maybe of a hypothesis or maybe it could be just a, you know, a standalone question. So this is just you saying, this is what I'm looking at. So I'm looking at whether actin and myosin bind together to have an impact on the motility of the cortex. Like that is my question. And then I have a hypothesis saying, actin and myosin bind together and they do this. So this is just my question and you're just following on from your problem. So you've identified your topic, you found the problem, the gap in literature, and then you write down what your question is. So what it is exactly that you are looking for. And this will be like your guiding star. This will be the thing, the question, the statement that you have at the top you know, at the top of your mind, whenever you are looking at literature, whenever you're writing a literature review, whenever you speak to someone, you have that question in mind. And so that needs to be something that's really well defined. It should also be really specific. So it can't just be saying, is obesity caused by, I don't know, fatty food. I'm just giving a random example. That is too vague. Is obesity in children, in male, in female, different ages? What fatty foods? What like you need to be very very specific 
so specific that someone else should be able to pick up your research question and know what it is you're looking at. They need to be able to know sort of what methods you're using. Is it qualitative or is it quantitative? What type of research are you actually doing? That should really be in the research question. So a good research question is one where that is really well defined. Then step number four is to write a research design. So this is where you're kind of creating a bit of a method, a bit of a process within a process. So you are now writing down and you're now thinking about how you're going to conduct this research. So to follow this will be the research proposal, but at this stage here, you're just thinking about your research design. So how are you going to get this research done? What are the factors that you need to think about? Who are the people, the participants that you may need? Are you doing a lab-based thing? Do you need cells? Are you you know, what, what, do you need humans? Do you need animals? Is it just a review paper? So do you just need to think about researchers out there? What kind of study are you going to conduct in order to find out the results and the answer to your question? Essentially, the research design is a practical framework. So it's giving, laying out that frame for you in order to answer your research question and here it's more of a thinking process it's more of a discussion you might want to ask your supervisor you might want to ask your tutor um, to talk about it how are we going to get the answer to this question and then to finish off the research process you now want to write a research proposal and i have a really good video about this and i'll leave the link for it down below where you are detailing all the steps for your research. So you're detailing your the background of your research, the literature review, and you're justifying that there is a need for this research. You then want to detail your methods, your materials, the aim, your you know, your timeline, how long it's going to take you to do these things. And then that document is what you take with you to your supervisor and say, look, this is my research proposal. You might take it to a potential PhD supervisor and say, look, this is what I've found, um, this is what I'm really interested in, and here is the proposal, and you have it all outlined there for you. Or it's a document that you're able to use in order to build upon your dissertation. Um, so if you're writing an essay dissertation, you are able to use that as well. So with your research proposal, you are detailing the context, you are detailing the purpose, the plan and your aims. The whole process going from finding a topic, finding a problem, finding the research question, defining the actual research and then now you're compiling all of that and you're putting it into a document called the research proposal and all of this information is in there. Someone should be able to pick that up, see what you found, find the review of the literature and say, right, this is a good study. This is a good bit of research. We are going to approve this and then you can go on and plan the rest of your research. So I hope this video helped you summarizing the steps of the research process to begin with. And as I mentioned, I'm gonna be doing each of these five steps as single videos so I can expand on them and I'll make it into a playlist so you're able to sort of follow up and click on um, the next couple videos. But for now, I hope this did help with thinking about the research process and thinking about maybe what stage you are at if you are at any of them. If you do want further support, you can contact me on thepagedoctor.com where I give support and we have a team of consultants, top consultants and top editors that can support you through the process of writing your research proposal or even through the post process of thinking about how you're going to find a gap in literature, how you're going to find you know, your hypothesis and define that for you. So don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know if this was helpful and don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to see more from me and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.